G'day guys, welcome back to True Footy and this edition of Eagles Corner, off-season edition. Uh, I never actually really intended to make Eagles content throughout the off-season and talk about uh, you know, how the, the off-season was going as such, but uh, I also didn't intend to be uploading so much content this time of year anyway, so I thought uh, for a fun little video to break up uh, the other style of videos that I've been doing, I thought I'd just take a little look at um, how the off-season was going from a West Coast point of view and comment on some of the things that have happened because we've had a little bit of news um, and I, I sort of try and look at what people are saying online about you know how the trainings are going, how the players are looking, injury news and stuff like that. So there's a little bit to unpack in this video. It won't necessarily be really long, uh, but we've also had some like admin changes as well. Uh, in particular, Ron O'Brien, the list manager, stepping down from his role after 33 years for the club. So uh, yeah, just a little bit of a cover off of uh, how things are going. I think the players will be going on their Christmas break pretty soon. There'll be no no preseason updates or anything like that. Uh, but that being said, we'll just try and cover off a little bit about what seems to be happening at the club if you haven't been following too closely. If you could do me a favor though, if you are an Eagles fan or if you're not, would you consider subscribing to this YouTube channel? I'm trying to hit 25k subscribers by the end of the year and I'm a little bit behind schedule. But what you can be assured of is if you do subscribe, you will get plenty of AFL content. You'll get a little bit of cricket content this summer as well. And uh, if you're an Eagles fan, it's extra helpful because I probably will be doing uh, pretty regular Eagles content again going forward in 2024 and beyond. So let's crack into the crux of this video. First of all, let's talk about Rowan O'Brien. This is a fairly big exit in the sense uh, of, you know, someone who's been there for 33 years. And really does add to this this change we're seeing with West Coast. Um, obviously, we've got a new CEO. Don Pike is taking over for Trevor Nisbet. We've got new captains. Luke Shuey's retired. Nick Nat Nui's retired. Shannon Hearns retired. And now uh, Oscar Allen and Liam Duggan, the co-captains. I've done a separate video on that if you wanted to see my specific thoughts on that. Um, but what else has happened? I feel like there's been more changes than that. New fitness staff, new new head of fitness, I think uh, Michael Innes, Michael Innes? Yeah, not Matthew Innes, sorry, Michael Innes. I don't know, used to be a cricketer. I actually, I actually remember playing with Innes on Cricket 2004. That's how old I am. Uh, anyway, so let's talk about Rowan O'Brien for a start. Um, now, he specifically was list manager. Now, I'm not completely in touch with uh, all the different roles at West Coast, but uh, it's probably worth considering what actually is the role of list manager. So he used to be, uh, a national recruiting manager and his, his speciality was therefore young talent uh, that sounded weird but um, in particular I think he was in, involved with drafting decisions specifically um, versus a list manager who kind of oversees the listings and acquisitions generally speaking so to give an example of how, how varied that role can be um, O'Brien was the most recent list manager his specialty was recruiting the one prior to that, I think, was Vozo, or I don't know if there's someone in between. There's been a merry-go-round of list managers at West Coast lately. But uh, Craig Vozo uh, was a list manager at one point, not too long ago. And his background is actually law and contracts, law and contracts. So um, that doesn't necessarily mean that the list manager is the one who necessarily ticks off all the drafting decisions. Or maybe, maybe he has final say, but there is a distinction between those two things. There's a national recruiting manager, which O'Brien, I think, did at the same time as being list manager. He stood into the list manager role um, in the interim, and he's now stepped down. Now, I could be imagining this, but I thought I already knew this was going to happen. So I don't know if this was telegraphed and Rowan O'Brien had stepped into the role before um, you know, deciding to hang up the boots or if this was a decision he made recently. I'm not too sure, but you can probably just be rest assured he didn't get sacked or anything like that. He's been in the club for 33 years. And I also think that specifically on the case or in the case of our recruiting decisions over the last three years, as bad as things have been, um, we've actually done a pretty sound job. And I think there is data to suggest that with the recruits we've made, with the drafting decisions we've made, it's, it's actually looked pretty good. So 2021 was the year that he took over as list manager. We had Darren Glass in between at one point. He came in obviously, you know, as a former player, um, so you get a variety of people in this list management role. And uh, I think Brady Rawlings might have been a list manager at one point. But I mean, this guy's pedigree is pretty large. Like O'Brien has been with the club since 1990. And uh, it says, well, the article, I think on the Eagles website, accredits him as being integral in each of the club's premierships. So yeah, an Eagles man through and through. So uh, looking back, you have to say, if he's been involved in recruiting throughout that entire period and the Eagles and now, well, uh, considered one of the most successful clubs of the AFL era. 
you just sweep the last two seasons under the rug. Um, generally speaking, uh, you know, he must have been pretty damn good at his job. And that was similar to the sentiment I had about Trevor Nisbet. So um, it changes a foot. We're going to have to a new list manager. But like I said, it has been a bit of a revolving door. So it was Darren Glass uh, in 2021. He replaced Brady Rawlings in 2019. Now we've got to find another one. So it'll be interesting to see who we get. Um, like I said, I think the, the drafting and recruiting philosophy has been pretty good over the last three years. And I think that's what you can attribute to O'Brien. So it's not just the drafting decisions, which I think have been good. You know, in 2021, obviously the jury's still out on Chessa, but, um, you know, Hoff and Bazo, I think those were two good selections. Jack Williams was also part of that draft and he's playing well for the position he was taken in. But also the trades we've we've um, picked up as well. And I think Jaden Hunt is, as a free agent is probably the best example of someone we've recruited that has worked out really well. There's a couple of nothing ones in there, like SPS didn't really turn out. Um, and it's too early to say on Brockman and Flynn. But uh, generally speaking, I think we've been pretty good in the recruiting space over the last three years. Um, so it's unknown exactly to what extent this will have an impact on us going forward. But hopefully we have someone with fresh ideas um, that will add something different to our current philosophy. Anyway, moving on from that, uh, we'll, we'll find out exactly who is list manager probably. Oh, it might take like three months, who knows. Uh, but uh, in terms of you know what's happening on field in a, from a training point of view, there's been this little annoying little trend now of picking up a few injuries here and there. So I'll, I'll break down some of the ones that have been reported on. So we'll start with Harley Reid. This one, again, if Harley Reid literally dropped his guts and farted like publicly, it would be reported on the front page of the West Australian. So we have to take it with a grain of salt. To be fair, that would probably would be headline news. New recruit farts in general direction of fans. Like, that's pretty devastating. Uh, but yeah, with him, I think there was once where he um, he was pulling out his hammy a little bit, uh, a little bit of tightness. Then I think he's got a cork. Um, I guess the only reason I'm bringing that up is that it just seems pretty trivial, and it sounds like he's all right. So no need to worry there. Uh, there is the Archer Reed a little injury as well. So that is actually something that apparently is pre-existing. Just means he's got a knee brace. Again, slow and steady with Archer Reed. He's, he probably needs to put on about 15 kilos before he plays AFL level. So we just want him to get through a pre-season and hopefully a full season at Waffle Eagles level. But there is one that is that is a little bit concerning to me, and that is the injury situation of Dom Sheed. Now, Dom Sheed is now in a moon boot because of a reported hot spot in his foot. Apparently, he uh, felt a bit of discomfort in, I think, his left foot, his kicking foot and is uh, currently now in a moon boot. But apparently he trained through that pain, which is just, you'd, you'd hoped we'd learn. But it's concerning because Dom Sheed in particular is getting a lot of lower leg injuries. Uh, I'm trying to work out if I wrote it down, but I feel like we are reaching that point now with Sheed amongst others, where some of his best years are being robbed from us. Because I, I, I know that I've been critical on Sheed's performances you know, here and there um, throughout the last few years when he's been fit. I think he played one game in 2022. And I think in 21, I actually think he had a good year in 2021, but then played through an injury at the end of that year and his form dropped away. My point being is, I feel like when he's actually fit and firing, he has the capacity to be a good AFL footballer, provided there's also a midfield mix around him to cover his deficiencies. So I think he's a classy, generally outside ball user, uses the ball well. Uh, he's quite poised, um, and, but he kind of lacks speed and defensive pressure. So again, the midfield mix around him is really important. That also applies to Andrew Gaff. But I'm just worried about this guy's injuries. Like I said, I played one game in 2022. I think that was two separate lower leg injuries that he's suffered. Um, you know, there was a fractured larynx last year as well. In fact, he missed the last four games of 2023 because of a different hotspot in his foot. So this, this weird epidemic of foot injuries that the Eagles seem to be incurring is, is ludicrous and it is genuinely cause for concern. So I will make it clear, I have no idea to the extent of which Sheed's injury is going to hurt him uh, or how long it's going to keep him out. Uh, but generally, I think these things like a, like a hot spot in the foot generally respond to rests, um, which means he's going to be off legs for a little while. And that's going to compromise his preseason. And uh, that is not ideal because I think as a primary midfielder in this team, it's going to be like Sheed and Kelly and um, and Gaff as the most experienced midfielders in this team next year. Uh, it's just it's a bad start to have one of those guys potentially not fully fit by the start of the season. Because yeah, the worst case scenario is probably that he plays unfit and stinks it up. Respectfully, I do like Dom Sheed. I want him in the side. That's probably why I'm I'm concerned about this injury, and it seems to be an ongoing thing for Sheed. 
But anyway, that was me just focusing on, on probably the, the only negative news of the preseason so far. It all seems to be going pretty smoothly. A few players look different. Uh, Brady Hoff is definitely a bit larger than we've seen him before, uh, judging by the pictures. Noah Long, I think, has probably had the biggest physical transformation. No, Ruben Jinby. No, but Noah Long separately. His body change is quite clear. Like his face looks leaner. He's he's got an athletic physique now. Like twelve months ago, he just looked like a, a high school kid. Um, so what that does for his game this year, I'm not too sure. Um, more goes into it than simply uh, being a bit bigger. But um, you know, he's he looks like he's in really good shape and attacking the preseason really well. And of course, much has been said about Ruben Jinby. The guy's been an absolute monster. He's put on five kilos. He's grown two centimeters, and he's gotten way fitter. Like I've said this in a recent video. I don't understand how someone does that. So we've got an absolute athletic beast in Ruben Jimby. He could probably still keep growing to like 6'4". Um, so, you know, with that in increased tank and a bit extra size, hopefully that will increase his output um, in the mid for next year. And I think it's really positive that he's played 17 games now. He goes into this this new season as someone who's not that green anymore. I mean, it's obviously quite green still, but it's not like he's played three or four games. Playing 17 last year and being exposed to some of the best opponents the, the midfield can possibly provide, like he's played on Clayton Oliver, uh, etc. I think there is good reason to believe that Jimby will improve a lot uh, in terms of output next year. Whether he's utilised as more of an offensive for, uh, midfielder or if he's using that defensive role again, I'm not too sure. But either way, I'm excited to see it. Um, Elijah Hewitt is another player that I'm really excited to see next year. Uh, I've talked about him a lot on this channel. But unfortunately, he has not actually uh, really started training yet. But I don't think there's too much cause for concern. Apparently, he played through a bit of a toe injury last year and they're just still letting it settle a little bit. Uh, they reckon he's probably a couple of weeks away, which means probably in the new year is when we're going to see Elijah Hewitt return to um, you know preseason. And I mean, that's fine. That's not the end of the world, but probably does forecast that it's going to take him a little bit of time to build that endurance, which is already a pre-existing uh, difficulty or weakness, uh, so to speak. I mean, uh, his he will be a midfielder eventually, but if he doesn't quite have a full preseason, we can certainly expect him to play as a, as a rotating forward, I think, to start um, 2023, 2024 rather. But anyway, guys, uh, that was just me sort of just word vomiting some of the updates from this uh, preseason. I will not do this video every week because I don't get down to training. I do read what other people are saying um, and I'm trying to put it in a concise way for you. But um, unless there's something to say, I won't say it. So anyway, I appreciate you watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel for more Eagles content and general AFL content. It's not just for Eagles fans, but I do like to give a little bit more uh, in-depth detail about the Eagles because it's so natural to me. And we do have a large Eagles supporting contingent of uh, true footy subscribers so thank you very much once again guys and i'll see you in the next video cheers